You Hit Metal 17 Times Every Day is an ARG on Instagram run by Adrian Gray, better known as Forgotten History. Titanic struggled to pass early safety tests. So have you done an iceberg test? Uh, yes, technically, yes. Yeah. Sorry, what do you mean technically? Well, it's just slightly different iceberg to normal. In what sense? Uh, just a bit warmer. So. Do you mean it was just water? With the account's first post on the 1st of December 2023, we are introduced to our protagonist, McKelly. He is shown to be on a blacksmithing game show of some kind and has successfully hit metals 17 times. He is rewarded with a photograph of a car and is subsequently arrested for ownership of property, which our protagonist, ever the cool and relaxed figure, simply states, yeah, These posts would continue for 36 more days until the 6th of January 2024. This is when we are first shown that this blank everyday account is more than meets the eye. McKelly has once again successfully hit metal 17 times, but when he is offered the photograph of a car, he states that he is not happy, which confuses the host. McKelly states that after having hit metal 17 times every day for over a month, he demands more for his work. An astounding two photographs of motor car. The video soon takes a dark turn as the host tells McKelly that he cannot break his time loop. McKelly is told that there is a way to escape, but he is yet to find it. The camera then pans to show us McKelly's older self, presumably trapped in the time loop for many years. McKelly once again finds his only reaction to this devastating news to be, yeah, McKelly would continue to demand more payment for his work and repeat this event in the time loop for another three days until day 41, where he attempts something drastic. He attempts to hit the metal only 16 times instead of his usual 17. The host tells McKelly that he must now go home empty handed. McKelly seems to feign disappointment and is surprised when he is told that he can simply leave to go home. McKelly is taken off stage and the host announces the next contestant, which is revealed to be Ah, uh, McKelly. McKelly. Still trapped in the time loop, our protagonist states yeah, This would continue until day 45 on the 14th of January, where the events begin in the same way, with McKelly attempting to hit metal 16 times. But the video is quickly interrupted by a loud buzzer, with the host stating that the sound can only mean one thing it's time for the bonus round. McKelly begs to see his family, but the host ignores him, asking him to name a variety of objects. We then see McKelly identify these objects as Square, Long Square, Gambling Cube, Willy, and Silly Factory. The screen that displays the shapes is interrupted, and for a split second, we can see an image that is not the best quality, but from what I can tell, it seems to be a man laid on a bed with wires inserted to his brain. We can see some code stating that the player hardware has overheated. McKelly immediately questions this, but the host pulls him away and distracts him, covering it up as a slight technical issue. On the 16th of January, day 47, McKelly would make the drastic decision to hit metal 18 times in one day. He does not allow the host to complete his usual announcement of McKelly's achievements, as he interrupts to tell the host that he won't accept property and he won't say fair enough. Realising his immediate mistake, McKelly curses at himself. The host looks to McKelly and tells him it is cute that he thinks it will make a difference in a very sinister tone. He is then told he gets a special prize for hitting metal 18 times, a phone call. The host answers the phone with a woman who sounds incredibly distraught on the other line begging for McKelly to be woken up. McKelly questions who is calling and finally asks why he is being kept in this loop. Our protagonist has lost his co composure and his voice is beginning to falter as he begs the host for answers. He asks the host what his end game is and we are met with this screen. This is where things start to get a bit more interesting. We can see that the user, clearly McKelly, has input the statement end game. And we can see further from the rest of the code that the end game functionality has been permanently disabled by an admin. The system then attempts to load the previous loop, trapping McKelly in sight of this simulated reality. This event would occur only once more until day 49 on the 18th of January. The video is interrupted by a telecast stating that a fire has broken out in the tech facility of the mysterious Vale Industries. We can also see a case report of the death of a woman named Samantha Penford for a split second, stating that the tape has been restored to the highest possible quality by an unknown woman named Jenny. The fire has left three unnamed people injured and the CEO of the company, Michael Lee, in a comatose state. We can immediately draw the parallel of this name to our protagonist, McKelly, and assume that McKelly is actually Michael Lee, CEO of Vale. We find out that Michael Lee was a controversial figure facing multiple lawsuits for abusive employees, gambling company money, as well as illegal experiments. I find it interesting that Michael Lee was facing a lawsuit for gambling away company money when McKelly, faced with a dice, calls it a gambling cube. We then have a brief interview with Lee's partner, Gia Fields. She doesn't believe the fire to have been an accident and is suspicious that Lee is the only one to have ended up in a coma. It's clear that whatever experiments Lee was conducting at Vale are somehow connected to her simulation with McKelly, with Lee possibly have been drugged, kidnapped, or volunteered himself for a top secret experiment on his brain or consciousness. Another two days later, on the 20th of January, day 51, we are back to our expected series of events. However, instead of being rewarded for the amount of times he has hit metal today, McKelly is rewarded for hitting metal very well. He is rewarded with a special entertainment prize. 
This prize is a man reading out a series of random numbers, which are in fact not random numbers but part of pi. McKelly is unhappy with this, still desperate for liberation. The video is then interrupted and we can pause on this frame. We can see that an admin has paused the game in order to get access to McKelly. Presumably, Michael Lee then wakes up in bed in a confused state. He is then approached by a woman who asks him for the code to Vault 3. Michael Lee then tells her that the passcode is 69398. The woman then puts Lee back to sleep despite his protests. The game then resumes with McKelly, shocked and breathless, realizing that this game show is This is not real life. On day 54, the 23rd of January, we are not met with the beautiful face of our protagonist, but rather a video from the Veil Company. We are thanked for taking part in a product trial, presumably some sort of virtual reality device currently in development. We are told the product is called the Mirage Procedure. It can take the user to a number of preset worlds, with Forest Battle and Castle Grand Prix being available with the product, and the option of adult or custom worlds at a premium price. We can assume Lee is being held in a custom world made by his captors or carers to keep him in his comatose state. We are then shown how the operation is done for this procedure, which looks intensely painful. We are then given a list of issues, and the main one I'd like to focus on is impressionability, as this could suggest that if Lee has been abducted, his captors are using the Mirage procedure to keep him in a suggestible state in order to access sensitive information or money. As of the making of this video, the most recent post was day 57 on the 26th of January, with us back viewing McKelly hit metal. However, he quickly interrupts the host and states that he is aware that this is not the real world and that he is not McKelly. The host assures him that it was just a bad dream. We then cut to the screen where McKelly was asked to name objects and a message from Gia can be seen attempting to contact Michael. Once again, the host distracts McKelly from the screen, taking him to the other side of the stage where he has his accomplice Grigor play a song so that the host may sing to McKelly. I'll just let this masterpiece play in full. But McKelly, I've known you so long, but you don't even know my name. Why are you singing? So maybe... We've been doing it wrong, cause you and I are kind of the same. I would like to leave, because I am sad, and I miss my family. Give me a reprieve, it's driving me mad, hitting metal into life for me. Cause when you're stuck in a game show, life is tough, I can't work out this time loop stuff. You won't be leaving us today. So there's just one thing that I can say. What? Fair enough. You can't say fair then fair enough. You can't say fair then fair enough. You can't say fair than that. Oh, trap. Everyone in time will fair enough. You can't say fair then fair enough. You can't say fair then fair enough. You can't say fair than that. Oh, trap. We can see that Gia is still attempting to contact Michael, saying he can get out using the bugs in the Mirage procedure. McKelly is unaware of these messages as he continues to sing his duet with the host, applauded for his wonderful vocals. This is all that we have seen of this ARG as I've written this script. I'm excited to see what Adrian has in store for the newer episodes of the series, as I've never been this interested in an ARG before. This was something I really enjoyed delving into and learning more about, rather than it just being a silly Russian man on my phone as I doom scroll through Instagram reels. Thank you for watching, colon 3.